Hey everybody, John Greenwald here with theblackvault.com. Decided to do what I believe anyway will be a short segment for you all, exploring some documents on what I'll call UFO material. The question mark is, what is the definition of material? Now, I have made reference to one of these documents in the past, and some people were questioning whether or not material meant material in the form of just somebody said something that they saw, wrote it down, and that's a UFO document, which is material, or physical UFO material. Well, I'm going to go over a couple documents, and I've got something new for you guys on one of these, which, yet again, adds kind of this reinforcement that we are dealing with something that is so secretive. In my opinion, the government for decades, just with me, well before December of 2017, for decades have pulled out everything that they can imagine to try and stop you and I from accessing UFO information. This is yet another example. But let's go ahead and bring up some visuals. You guys know I love that. So the CIA and UFO material, this is just honing in on a couple different documents. Obviously, there's much more on this channel. You'll find one other video that I can recall where I go into a UFO case from the CIA files and it depicting material, physical material and wreckage that they had received. Some believe that it is an Earth-based technology. I actually lean towards that on, uh, on that particular document. But again, just very cool where you see their investigative methods, that they are getting material, that there's stuff out there. And I also did a big breakdown on the CIA UFO material where I touch on some other stuff. But here I'm, I'm again, zoning in on a couple documents. And let me first say, these have been around for a while. They may seem familiar to you, but it's an important connection in my view that I think that uh, we should discuss. Uh, but on top of that, again, I've, I've got kind of an, an update for you when it comes to these records. The first document is a two pager. This was from 1976. Now, a very quick reminder that this is about seven years after the US government, US military shut down their UFO investigative effort known as Project Blue Book. Before that, there was Project Sign and Project Grudge, but everybody knows Project Blue Book. Ended in 1969. And essentially they wiped their hands clean of the topic and they said, hey, we don't care about UFOs. You wanna go report them, Pfft, go ahead. Go to the UFO reporting center, go to MUFON, go to the private sector, call the police. They even had local law enforcement in on the list of who to call, but don't call us, we don't care. And well prior to 2017, since 1996, I have been filing FOIAs and that stance of the military until it changed uh, in the last uh, five years or so, that stance of we don't look at UFOs was my entire focal point of research. And it was amazing to see that every agency contradicted that statement. These documents are kind of the prime example of why it contradicted it, as you'll see in a moment. So again, this was from April 1976. Let me get my laser pointer here so I can point. Uh, so you'll see that this uh, this particular document, we don't know the, the classification level of it. They redacted the entire thing. Uh, this is from the what what's called the DCD or the domestics con the domestic contacts division. Essentially, it's their sources in the field here in America. So I, I think that that's kind of the easy nutshell way to to um, to explain it. Uh, so we don't know who it was sent to. This particular document it was from the domestic contacts division. And the subject was UFO research, but you see a heck of a lot of blackout here. We have no idea. That's obviously a case number, uh, but we don't know the UFO research, what's, what's going on here. It's also referencing two other documents, also redacted, they don't want you to know. And let me read this to you. Per the request in reference B, we attempted to obtain analytical guidance on the UFO redacted subject. We contacted the Assistant Deputy Director for Science and Technology or a D D S and T doctor redacted to see if he knew of any official UFO program and also to attempt to answer some of the questions posed by redacted doctor redacted exhibited interest in 
We don't know what he exhibited interest in because it's redacted, which was hand carried to his office. I'm going to stop there real quick. This is uh, this is the document that I've profiled in the past. And the question mark is what was hand carried to his office? You generally aren't going to use that expression if you're taking a, a, a post it note or a piece of paper or or whatever. You know, I mean, in my opinion, we're talking about something physically hand carried to the office. Let me go back to reading after a short examination of its contents, kind of more indication. It's not just a pay piece, piece of paper. Dr. Redacted advised us that he would personally look into the matter and get back to us. As we discussed in reference a Dr. Redacted has since contacted us and relayed the following information. It would appear to be best if you advised redacted that he should and we have no idea. It's all redacted. If you're listening to the audio version, it's about a full line. Uh, we don't we don't know what what that explanation was. What what should he do? What was that advisement that the CIA was was saying about something that was examined on this UFO case within CIA headquarters? The second page, it does not seem that the government has any formal program in progress for the identification slash solution of the UFO phenomena. Dr. Redacted feels that the efforts of independent researchers and then another line of redacted material, maybe names, maybe organizations, are vital for further progress in this area. At the present time, there are offices and personnel within the agency who are monitoring the UFO phenomena. But again, this is not currently on an official basis. Sure sounds familiar, doesn't it? Dr. Redacted feels that the best approach would be to keep in touch with and in fact develop reporting channels in this area to keep the agency slash community informed of any new developments. In particular, any information which might indicate a threat potential would be of interest and would specific and as would specific indications of foreign developments or applications of UFO related research. Dr. Redacted has advised us that he would evaluate any additional information we might receive as well as disseminate significant developments through appropriate channels, should it be warranted. We wish to stress again that there does not now appear to be any special program on UFOs within the intelligence community, and this should be relayed to Redacted. So very cool stuff. Because it really is reminiscent to the stories that we hear today. Nothing official. They're keeping an eye on it. Anything threat potential kind of goes through some channels, you know, and that you know, go back to the a tip stories that we that we keep hearing. And this controversy. I mean, this is kind of how I envision on where that controversy is there. Nothing was official. So according to the Pentagon, they're like, yeah, so and so didn't do anything. And we didn't look at UFOs. Meanwhile, other people may have thought, hey, there's something to this. We got to make sure we monitor it, even though the government has done their investigation and they they ended it eight years or so prior, seven, eight years ago prior uh, to this document that I'm going over. Uh, we still need to monitor it for potential threats. And again, fast forward decades. It's like the same exact story. So all of these redactions, I went after uh, the CIA to take those redactions off, try to get them lifted. And in January of this year, I got a response. It's called a mandatory declassification review. I talk about it all the time, but in short, it, you're essentially mandating an agency to take a document they've released before with their redactions, go back to the original, and then see what's not classified anymore. Because what was classified five or 10 or 20 years ago is sometimes not classified in 2022. So I filed it in 2019. It took until January of 2002 to tell me we conducted a thorough and diligent search in an effort to locate a full text version of the document, but were unsuccessful. In English, they lost it. They have no idea where it is. So they redacted it, saved that one, took the original, went, oops, threw it into the shredder, and away it goes. So when somebody like me comes along and tries to get all of that redaction lifted, or at least some of it, it's gone. Pretty frustrating, because as you can tell, there's something that was physically hand carried to an office of somebody important within the CIA. He sees it important to look over, examine, and then has advice that we can't see. 
So it would have been very beneficial here, however many decades later, for the CIA to go back and re- unredact that. And yet they can't do it. Let me read to you one more document. This one's a little bit harder to read. I'm going to do my best. I just learned this new tool. I'm going to try this here. Let's see if I can. Cool. So this is another document uh, that I got from the CIA against something that has been around for quite some time. Uh, In fact, you can see it was approved for release back in 1978, likely in this uh, very, very state that you see. Same deal. It's from that uh, domestic um, contacts division. And let me read it to you. Mr. Redacted, at a recent meeting to evaluate some material from Redacted, you mentioned a personal interest in the UFO phenomena. As you may recall, I mentioned my own interest in the subject, as well as the fact that DCD had been receiving UFO related material from many of our uh, S&T or uh, science and technology sources who are presently conducting related research. These scientists include some who have been associated with the agency for years and whose credentials remove them from the, quote, nut, unquote, variety. The attached material came to my attention through these sources, and it appears to have some legitimate. I'm going to stop here. It's either FI or PI. I haven't been able to figure it out. Both acronyms would fit PI public intelligence. FI is foreign intelligence. I'll let you guys decide. It's pretty hard to read because you can see that little spot there that's removed. Is that a P? Is it an F? Who knows? It appears to have some legitimate or community interest potential. <clears throat> Excuse me. The redacted work being carried out by Dr. and then a couple of redacted lines. So it seems to me more than a name should in the view of our s and sources be evaluated by the agency or community in view of the expertise associated with your office, as well as your interest in the subject. I felt you might like to see the material, see the material document page, post-it note or something else. Bracketed at the bottom, if you need additional information or if you feel there is some potential, I would be glad to discuss this with you. If not, please feel free to destroy the material. How's that for frustrating? Destroy it. So I'm not here to tell you that material is referencing UFO wreckage of some kind. But for me, the way that this is wording, Uh, worded and how uh, this now second document from 1976, what I didn't tell you was it was from July. So only a couple months after the document that I just read to you, it's likely all connected. Uh, Likely. Of course, there's room for for, uh, a little bit of uh, being wrong there just because there's so many variables here that are redacted. But it really kind of seems like this is all connected. And it really seems to me like internally at the CIA, not nut variety, whatever that meant, uh, people from the outside, but rather inside they're watching this, it is something that is of interest. And it seems to me that there is material to go along with this interest. And that probably caused the interest. So I decided, hey, let's file a mandatory declassification review on this one. What do you think happened? I filed it in January of 2020. And then in August, just about four weeks ago, at the end of August, guess what happened? They couldn't find it. Gone. The original document was redacted. And they saved that copy. But then the original document, whoops, we lost it. Went into the shredder, went into the burner, the burn bag, it was destroyed. Who knows, but it's just gone. We did not locate any records responsive to your request. Doesn't exist. So here is yet another example of potentially very interesting UFO related content. Something that was there, likely a physical object that was hand carried to an office. Fast forward a couple of months, they revisit it. There's more quote unquote material. Okay. That could arguably be more documents and so on. And yet that is lost as well. Now I can tell you as somebody who's filed numerous mandatory declassification reviews, a lot of 
those that haven't done that may think, well, look, John, this is more than 40 plus years ago. The CIA likely doesn't have that material. I can tell you I have had World War II era related documents undergo a mandatory declassification review. So age really has nothing to, to do with it. And in my opinion, should not be the fallback excuse. It seems to me that when it comes to the UFO related material, and when it comes to the effort to get it further declassified, that they are piling on the instances of lost material. But then when it comes to some other non UFO related material, they're like, Oh, this document from 1941. Yep, no problem. Give us six months, we'll review it. I'm paraphrasing there, but they can find it. Are non UFO related documents lost? Absolutely. I've got tons of examples of that. So it does happen. It's not unique to the UFO niche of all of this. But I will say it seems heavy. I, I will say that do I have a stat for you? No, I, I'm, I'm just I, I, I will admit that I am just kind of uh, going off of a gut feeling. I don't have a way to really sit down and go through the last 26 years of filing more than 10,000 FOIA requests and numerous MDRs to, to, to give you a, a, a percentage. But I will say it feels heavy because the UFO topic has for decades been incredibly difficult to tackle. But then on top of that, when you see these rare gems in a pile of thousands of already very interesting pages on UFOs, which mind you shouldn't exist if you listen to the whole, hey, we don't care about UFOs after 1969. So you have thousands of pages from numerous agencies that exist. And then through those very interesting pages, you see gems like this, where they're talking about material and, and, and obviously something that's much more than just a, a story. And it's all gone. Numerous requests over the course of years, numerous documents gone, lost, who knows, poof, shredder. And it's incredibly frustrating, but incredibly telling because you've seen other videos on this channel here on YouTube on the black vaults channel that talk about the secrecy, the ever clamping down of secrecy on today's UAP conversation. But what a lot of people are forgetting is the conversation from decades ago, and it's just gone. And that that is something that I will not let go. I'll keep highlighting it for you. I have numerous other requests that are still open. We'll see. Uh, which ones they can find and which ones they can't. There are other documents that I've also written about um, that are mysteriously missing. So we'll see how far that trend continues. So make sure that you're subscribed to this channel if it's your first time here. A thumbs up on these types of videos is a huge help for me. Shows me what you like, shows me what you don't like. So make sure that uh, you hit that for me and turn the notification button on. Always interested in your comments. If you're watching on YouTube, just go down south. You know where they are. Feel free to post your comments, uh, your questions, or your disagreement. Just keep it respectful. That's all I ask for. And if you're listening on these um, uh, these types of presentations and you didn't know I do them on YouTube, that's the primary place to watch them. Just go to www.theblackvault.com slash live. And if you want to subscribe to the audio feeds, I'll give you the reverse. Just go to any podcast feed out there, Spotify, iTunes, whatever is your fancy and search for the black vault radio. Not every video goes down to audio format, but when it makes sense, I do that as well. Thank you guys for your support and your attention to this channel. Sometimes it gets a little dry going through documents, but it's a lot of fun for me to do because it allows me to show you guys stuff that is often overlooked and missed. And that's what I love to do these types of, that's why I love to do these types of videos. That said, this is John Greenwald Jr. signing off and we'll see you next time. <laughs>